I want to know why Ibanez stopped making this awesome bass. So we're going to talk about it today and we're going to listen to it a bunch. So make sure you stick right here with me on the Rumblin' Man channel. Guys, welcome back to the Rumbling Man channel. Uh, if you haven't been here before, this is a guitar and bass channel where we look at guitars, uh, basses, related gear. We do giveaways and occasional tutorials. Have a lot of fun like that. And so I invite you to go on and subscribe to the channel. Uh, this particular playlist you're on is actually my Vintage Artifacts series. And in this series, we look at older guitars and basses that are no longer made, uh, but have something really cool about them. So we celebrate them. And today, the bass we're looking at is this very beautiful uh, Ibanez Roadstar 2, uh, what I believe is an RB950 Deluxe. Now, apparently, this is actually a pretty rare color. Uh, this is a wine burst finish, I believe. And uh, interestingly enough, this is a bird's, I believe this is a bird's eye maple top. And you can kind of see some really neat uh, wood grain under the uh, paint and the finish of this bass. The bass I'm holding right now is a 1984 uh, model made in Japan, and it's a very, very cool instrument. And it's got just a host of great sounds that you can get uh, really beautifully made. And so uh, I definitely want to celebrate this bass today and check it out. But the interesting thing is, you know, while as with like Fender, there's an abundance of information available on the internet where if there's a particular model you want to find out more about, you can find out a whole lot. With Ibanez, there are really some fabulous sources on the internet of information, but it's still, you know, some bases like this one, it's a little vague to find out what was going on, uh, you know, when it was made, uh, what the thought process was, specifically when it was discontinued. It's kind of harder to find that information, and I've been, I've spent days kind of poking around. The Roadstar 2 series of guitars and basses came out around 1983. There had been the Roadstar uh, instruments of the late 70s and early 80s, um, I don't know how well they did, other than that they're a lot rarer to find than the Roadstar 2. And then the Roadstar 2 series is said to have come out around 1983. So essentially the Roadstar 2 uh, basses and guitars were kind of a relaunch of the original Roadstars, but they relaunched them, you know, new designs, new features, etc. As far as the basses went with the Roadstar 2 series, you had a lot of different models. There were some P-style models and PJs, and then they started making some basses that looked a lot like this. And this particular deluxe model has some really beautiful binding around it. Uh, it has gold hardware. It has a matching headstock, uh, some really nice tuners. Uh, and what really gets me about this bass is the sound. Now you heard a rock demo just now. We're gonna listen to some more demos in just a little bit, uh, but I wanna talk real quick about what produces the sound because we have three knobs here. Now, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, everything on this bass is original other than these knobs, okay? But it's interesting uh, how these particular knobs are routed. So this first knob right here is actually a 
pickup selector knob. So you roll it, you know, in the 10 position and you're listening to this pickup, then you roll it this way near the bridge pickup. And then there's a notch filter in the middle to where you can know when you're right in the middle of the two pickups and you can blend them both ways, which is really nice. I talk to a lot of bass players and a lot of bass players prefer a master volume and a pickup selector knob uh, over two volume knobs. Okay. Uh, right here, in the second position, we actually have our master volume. So that's gonna control the volume for the entire bass. And then down here, we have what is a tone knob, okay? So that's gonna work like a standard, you know, bass guitar tone knob. But the interesting thing is that these two pots, these two knobs right here, they both do kind of a coil tapping feature by simply being pushed down. Which is really neat and really interesting because in more modern designs, uh, you know, coil tapping knobs, will be one that you pull up, or there will be a toggle switch, which there were toggle switches on some of these bases, but not this particular deluxe version for whatever reason. But I really like the sound you can get. Now, I assume, from what I'm hearing when I mess with this, I assume what these two uh, coil tap knobs are doing is they're splitting the pickup. So imagine the range of sounds that you can get. Now, like one of the last videos I talked about when I reviewed the Ibanez ATK in this same Vintage Artifacts series, we discussed how there is no bass that's gonna put some other classic model out of business because no bass can perfectly clone the tone of another bass. You can't perfectly clone a P bass tone. You can't perfectly clone a music man tone. Jazz basses, you can get a little closer, but still there's a little something different about each pickup design. But I was discovering the other night, if you want a bass that can get close and that can kind of trick a lot of people, uh, I, was, I was really plugging this up and just having a blast with all the sounds that you can get that are like other basses. You know, with this pickup right here, um, if you split it, you can kind of get similar to a P bass sound. And if you have it on full, but then split this one and blend them together, you actually get a sound that's kind of reminiscent of a PJ bass. Uh, you know, down here with the humbucker, you can get a Music Man style sound or kind of a Jocko Pastorius style sound. Uh, and then if you split both pickups, you can get a really nice and really powerful jazz bass sound. So it's like, what has happened in the life of this bass over the years? Because, I mean, it's got some road wear to it, and I, I just wish I could know, you know, who all's hands this beautiful instrument has been in. Surprisingly, this is a bolt-on neck, um, which is interesting to me because when you pick this up and you feel the finish of it, it, it's reminiscent of something that actually would be like a neck through, but sure enough, it's bolt-on. Uh, and I think one really cool thing about this design, the way these bases looked was, it's kind of like a... Uh, reminiscent of a Rickenbacker almost, except it's just got this really cool edge to it. And it's interesting, you know, today it is 2020. And I have to say that as of NAM 2020, I was there and Ibanez has a lot of stuff out right now that I personally really like. Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of the sound gear bases, but right now I feel that Ibanez has a ton of really cool bases out. Uh, if you just peruse around their website, um, you know, the host of things that they have available right now is really cool. And the thing that, that's out that's most similar to these old road stars is the Talman series, the TMB bases. And I like those quite a bit. I hope that we'll be having more from Ibanez uh, soon here on the channel because as of right now, I am really happy with uh, the selection of bases that they have out. And Ibanez is also a company that we can really celebrate the history of, you know, great guitars and basses, pedals and amps, uh, all made by Ibanez, okay? Let's listen to this bridge pickup. <laughs>
isn't it cool that they made this bass and they made it so versatile? A passive bass with two humbuckers, who knew it could be such a powerhouse sound? Why did the Roadstar 2 series get discontinued? I'm sure that information is probably available, but more specifically, this model, when was it discontinued and why? Why didn't they expound upon this? Because of all the bases that Ibanez has out today, this RB95, I would have loved to have this been a bass uh, that had continued to be in production and in series that they could have continued, you know, developing and expounding upon. Uh, but for whatever reason, not too long after 1984 when this was made, uh, they were gone. They disappeared. And this particular color, from what I understand, this wine burst color that we have here is actually a rare color. There's a kind of a blue burst uh, that I forgot the technical name of. I've seen a picture of one black one. Um, there's a non-deluxe model that was kind of a cherry burst. But apparently you don't see this color a whole lot. It's like a phantom that disappeared. And so I'm really glad to have the opportunity uh, to see this bass in person and to get to play it. So guys, have you got any information about uh, the discontinuation of the Roadstar 2 series or this model in particular? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, personally, I really like to learn about models more and more. I love to talk about the history of guitars and basses. Uh, it's a very fascinating subject to me. And we're going to have plenty more uh, of talks about these type of things right here on the Rumbling Man channel. So make sure, as the link above me will show right now, make sure you check out and stay on my Vintage Artifacts playlist. And we got more Vintage Artifacts coming soon and got a couple other bass videos in there right now that you can check out. So guys, thanks so much for checking out this review of this sweet bass today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I invite you to give me the thumbs up button so that YouTube will be more likely to include my video in searches. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to the Rumble Man channel, I invite you to become one of my subscribers right now. I would love to have you along for the journey, and I think you'll really like the videos we come out with. You can hit me up on social media. I've got Instagram and Facebook, and it all kind of points right back here to the Rumble Man channel, which is where it all goes down. In fact, if you're a regular viewer, I like to invite you uh, to come and be a supporter of my channel on Patreon. Um, with COVID-19, I lost all my work, and for a couple months now, YouTube has been my only job, and I have no idea where things are going to go when the economy opens back up. Uh, but I would love to have you as one of my Patreon supporters. That said, there is never any pressure from me for anyone to do that because at the end of the day, we all have our own responsibilities and my ultimate goal is for you to be blessed by the content we put out. So God bless you guys. Thanks so much for checking out this video today. I'll chat with you in the comments and I'll see you on the next vid. Peace.